A man lives and dies, too often only to be quickly forgotten, like the hundreds of leaves fallen from trees and swept by the wind. Once in a while, there comes a man who, brief though his years, leaves a legacy and monument to remember him by. Such a man was my father, and his monument is the Far Eastern University. I think this is an early picture of my father and this one of him on his desk in the FEU. We still have that desk. It's there in the memorabilia room now. I'm Lourdes Reyes Montinola. My father was the founder of FEU and his name was Nicanor Reyes. He was a much loved person, not only by his family, but also by all of those whom he worked with. My grandmother, Lola Kayang, was supposed to have considered him her jewel. He was the only one in the family who aspired to study abroad. My father lived in those days of honor and integrity, in the halcyon days of peacetime Manila. Nick Joaquin describes it as uh, the noble and ever loyal city of Manila a wonderful time, a period when there was so much hope because of the forthcoming independence of the country. The streets were beautiful, the homes were beautiful. In my mind, I remember trees like Isaac Peral lined with flame trees. And from our house, you could see almost all the way to the boulevard. Then many times, he used to whistle. You know, he liked whistling, so he would just walk up and down whistling. And in the boulevard, it was really just enjoying the sunrise and then the, the, the breeze. I think he enjoyed it as much as I did. He really loved trees, and he said, if you ever build a house, you build it around the trees. Don't cut any. In the property that FEU had in Diliman, my brother Dean was the one who contributed so many, many trees there. No? And in FEU itself, the ones planted by my father were the acacia and then the banyan trees. Our architect found a spot that would not disturb the trees. No? The architect was Pablo Antonio. This is our house, and you can see some of the trees. And then my, my mother always had lots of ferns and ground orchids. And she loved ferns. This is a picture of my mother. This one, the only picture we have of my brother, Chito, who passed away together with Chin. My father, he was typical of the people of that era. Simple, but determined to do well for the country. In his own private life, he had many, many interests. He was a sharpshooter. He liked fishing, he liked all the sports. The popular professions in his time were medicine and law, but he was shy and unassuming, especially compared to his dashing brothers. It was Mr. Marcos Roses 
who suggested accounting, especially because at that time, only the British and the Scotch could be auditors or accountants. My father hit it off very well because he found an excellent, excellent teacher in the States, in Colombia. And then he was the first graduate, not only among Filipinos, but also among Americans. Obviously, he really liked accounting, and he was very happy to do something different that the country needed. He was the only one who believed in it. He left UP because he could not persuade them to try something like that. He really wanted to establish that school. Well, let's see, they, they could gather only 11 students, <laughs> and they, they had classes, I think, in a rented venue. It was only much later when it merged with the Far Eastern College, headed by a good friend of my father, Fabelia. FEU became Far Eastern University. Theoretically, we were ahead of AIM. We were ahead of the business school in La Salle, Ateneo, UE, of course. All the others were born after FEU. And then more than anything else, people could go to school in the evenings. They could work the whole day and then go to school after. You know? I was a messenger at one time looking for a job and uh, I used FEU as my key because I was then a night student. It molded my own character in, in terms of overcoming my inferiority complex because I came from a very poor family in Cavite and I was orphaned at the age of five. FEU today looks like a pearl in a sea of chaos around it. Today, it ranks, I think, one of the best. My father, he wanted the image of progress. He was going the reverse of the neoclassic buildings, the major buildings in Manila. Art Deco was just introduced to the States. It was something new. It was automatic that all the others were done by Pablo Antonio also and done in the same style. And I think they are really outstanding examples. When you look at everything there, every corner has a fantastic design. My grandfather was quite revolutionary in his thinking at that time. There were a lot of firsts in, during his time. I think to begin with, we focus on not only the academics, but also sports and the performing arts. Since my grandfather's time, this is very important. It speaks of a holistic education. And it prepares you for gainful employment and also to become an engaged citizen of the global world. It's the continuation of a legacy in education for me. FEU was the revolution in my life. It was my, to become my home. The dean of the Institute of Law at the time I enrolled was Sovito Arzalonga. And he said, you come to me, I will give you the UP education that you wanted. And as a bonus, you get also Harvard and Yale education. FEU taught me the rudiments of my faith. FEU taught me liberal education that a man must not only be a professional in life, he must also be an all-around person. We were the best in debates, in the stage, almost anything. That's why he promised the auditorium to Sarah McKean.
South Pacific. Alexander Danilova came to dance. We had the Shakespeare group, Martha Graham, famous uh, artist. We had so many outstanding artists who came and performed in FE. It was really, really the venue. People would go all the way out to, to what you call downtown now, no? but at the time it was the place to be. First air conditioned. <laughs> Yes, the biggest, and, and then sort of like the cultural center before the cultural center came about. I feel as if my involvement in cultural work has its roots in the Firestone University. As a teenager, I saw my first opera, Salzuela, and I saw concerts and recitals at the Firestone University Auditorium. It's like the world to me. It's because I was so enamored with the auditorium as a teenager. So there was no other place as far as I was concerned where to study and I have no regrets. Enrollment went from, you know, up higher and higher in the span of 10 years. During that time, FEU lorded it over in all the CPA examinations. You know. They were being tutored by my father, even outside classes, and he would invite them to go to our house in Agno every Sunday and then teach them from 10 o'clock in the morning and then break off for lunch and then start again because he really, really loved people. The, the best thing that he liked was tutoring others. If my father would personally tutor people during the war, then they would tap also, because he explained so clearly. And then without notes, my father would just pace up and down on the platform and then talk, no? and he seemed to know everything. To this day, so full of stories about the people who strive and then they do well. No? Well, I would say he was a very nice guy. So I went to see him since he knew about Colombia and the, this Professor Kester, and uh, we, we got along very well. I chose Colombia because Dr. Reyes was the first doctorate degree. Uh, he got the first award. President Reyes, he was always around. You know, he was always around. All of us knew he was the president. The FEU High School was a group of one-story buildings. Palagi ako sa library not. The library was in the main building. I was there almost every afternoon. First, I had very few books. It, it just happened that I liked writing. It was the first time I saw my name in print. Of course, I was in cloud nine. <laughs> when you're a teenager, you know, and you see your name in print, yeah. You know. I think it would have been exciting to have been around the time that FEU particularly was rising from year to year by leaps and bounds. the parades in the view, anniversaries with the extravaganzas because they were really, really major productions. We have Manuel Rojas visiting the campus, Vice President Osmeña giving a speech, speeches by the president of the country. He said, I don't mind telling you that I think the FEU is the best non-sectarian uh, school in the Philippines. Can you imagine growing and growing and then being recognized by the president of the country, and then seeing that what you're doing is really being appreciated by all. Now. It, it would have been nice to have seen a period like that, where there was so much joy and pride in the campus. My father was invited by President Quezon and then Douglas MacArthur to a meeting where General Lim and General Valdez were present. 
From the schools, there were only two, Ayan Mariano de los Santos and then my father, and they were supposed to plan the defense of the country. And that was how they started the ROTC. In the beginning, FEU had the least number of ROTCs. Later on, just before the war, they had the second highest. This is the Philippines, December 26, 1941, the day after Christmas. Jap bombers are coming. They're coming in spite of the fact that Manila was declared an open city. An open city? Open for fire, destruction, death. The war just brought out the, the worst <laughs> in people. Brings out the good, but along that, it also brings out the worst in them. You had to bring a bayong of Mickey Mouse money as the currency to go to market and people trying to earn money for their living, they resorted to a lot of wrong things. And in other words, uh, cooperating with the enemy. You know? As far as courage, bravery, especially when the ROTC boys of FEU and also the Philippine scouts, they went to war at the age of 16. So they were the ones defending the country. They were very young. And those were the boys that who went off to war immediately. So my father was very sad when, when he would find out that so-and-so didn't make it, no? Because they, they were the ones who were there in Capas and the Bataan March, and then also in Corregidor, no? And they were really young, young boys. The, the military training at that time was only two months, and they were raw, and, but they fought bravely, you know? In their first daylight mission over the heart of Hitler's fortress, American bombers, combined with British air forces, are pounding Germany with raids around the clock. One propeller out, a bomber limps home. In all, 68 American planes failed to return. He was a tail gunner. Today, squadrons like these in ever-increasing numbers are taking the war home to Germany itself. And then theirs were the kind that had to be low, flying low, so that the bombs would hit the, the country. You know? So that's how he also was shot down. Nobody could make out what he was <laughs> because he, he, he looked like so skinny and young. And they didn't identify him with the Americans. 
Well, he and my brother were always interested in sports. They were into every sport, and particularly with the encouragement of my father. My father had them taught boxing to defend themselves. No? Teaching Noreen served him well during the war because one time there was a bully. When he fought back, they couldn't believe that he was that good, and he became famous because you know, from one, one fight to another, he, 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 he also did. But then, every sport, he, he excelled. He, he was late in his studies because he was always in the mountains. No? Be brave were the last words that my grandfather uh, said to my mother when their whole family was massacred in 1945 as the Japanese were retreating. And what it suggests is that in times of difficulty and loss, what's important is the ability to bounce back, to learn uh, the reasons why we lost, and to uh, make changes and come back stronger. He really was always very patriotic. And to have been associated also with the government officials, he must have been very aware of the country, especially he never, never, never cooperated with the enemies. No? It, it, it was sad that he should be the one who, who should have lost his life. Thousands of men signed up for an intensive course of training in American Army engineering methods and were employed all over the islands, clearing the debris of war to make way for the establishments of peace. The group who, who continued his mission were outstanding. Many of them dedicated, so dedicated I couldn't get over it. I mean, that, that seemed to be their life. My father used to be the chair of FEU from 1956 until he died in 1976. He made a promise, he made a promise to Dr. Nicanor Reyes, the founder, that he would really look after the school and look after the ring. He made a promise that he was going to really help build FEU and that he was going to take care of Nicanor Reyes Jr. and really look after him and guide him in making FEU a stable university.
more than anything else. He talked about the value of private education, how important education is for the improvement of a country. No? He had many, many innovations, the retirement laws, the cooperative, the importance of scientific research and computerization. When he came back to Manila, he continued to serve in the university. All the basketball games and everything, he was the one in charge. A sports the director plus vice president for administrative affairs. And so when he came back, he was also into all the other sports huh, that FEU at the time handled. Gymnastics, swimming, Tennis. We were famous for tennis, remember? FE has a very big impact to my life and to my varsity life. Kasi dito ako nagsimula. Pinag-aral nila ako yung whole college career ko. Doon pa lang na-inspire na ako na magtapos ng pag-aaral ko, mas galingan ko. And sobrang ang laking tulong sa akin ng FEU, lalo-lalo na din sa pagdating sa pagturo nila sa akin sa volleyball. Kung hindi dahil sa kanila, siguro hindi din ako makakarating kung saan man ako ngayon. My uh, countrymen, I signed Proclamation No. 1081, placing the entire Philippines under martial law. We had gone through a terrible period of everything went to pot, nobody cared. even about the, the order and the cleanliness all over Manila because of martial law, no? and then especially the university built. And there was graffiti everywhere because of the, when people were venting their anger on the walls. The university built declined so badly. After the comeback of peace, meaning with the victory of President Cory Aquino, I think that was 86, the revolution. Then in 89, all of a sudden, it seemed there was an offer to buy FEU. But then when I found out about it, I, I said, no, I, I couldn't do that to my father. So we offered too much, whatever it was, the price that they had agreed on. Because if we didn't step in, it would have gone to strangers, and I was not sure that their aims were really for my, maybe were my father's aims. No? lucky because we had a nice president. He was retired from UP and he, he was the one who had all the patience and it was fun going around with him because we would just go to the campus then we see something that's wrong then we look at each other and they said 
down. <laughs> that it would go down, it would go down, no? And designing it to the way you want it. It's fun. <laughs> we were also pushed into doing more than what we were going to do because we had a fire and then an earthquake within a few months after we took over. Then we realized the value of our buildings. And then, of course, we didn't have the money to just tear down and then build like others. And definitely, that was foolish if you tear down. No? Those are treasures. They cannot be replaced. The fact that we tried to improve not only our own campus, but also our surroundings, made the other schools wake up and then they asked us to lead them into improvements also in their own campuses. Because I think that it is important for people to preserve their culture. In the case of FEU, we had such a great heritage of Art Deco buildings, if only to preserve them. We made a mark which proved to be right because we were awarded no, by the UNESCO. When she started, I remembered what her father told her. And she quotes in the book, be brave. Now, don't you think she was brave when she took on that job of corporate secretary? Usually that's given to a lawyer, but she took it on. Then she went on to become chairman of the board. Isn't that being brave? But she was doing exactly what her father had asked her to do, and she has done it magnificently. To really know the founder and his dream, no? a man who was young, but he knew what he wanted. And then to see how many responded to that dream and considered his mission their mission also. He really inspired me with his dreams. And that was how I thought, well, this is something worth doing. The version of today is that the world is changing so fast. We're training students for careers that may not yet exist in the workplace. The shift has given more importance to the softer skills like critical thinking, self-directed learning, commitment to lifelong learning, having a moral backbone, and being a good citizen in the country. What you see or you don't see is all Sariling Sikap. When I say Sariling Sikap, I mean it's the organization and its people and its directors and its employees, its faculty, the student, contributing to what we have. Currently today, there's lots to do. It's an academic excellence aspiration. putting resources back into the operations by way of compensation adjustments, by way of facilities, by way of systems, additional student services. We bring about a value. That value is holistic education. I think this is in line with the founder's uh, wish. I believe he never settled at one point. I think he was continually trying to, to tweak and improve and grow. We have the same aspiration to continually improve and to be as academically sound as we can be. We are gathered this morning for our annual Founders Wreath Lane Ceremony. It 
was at FEU where we performed the best. We continue to be ranked in the top six in the quote, most preferred schools, unquote, for employability in the Job Street survey. We learned to be brave in the UAAP season 78. Let us continue to be brave. The words be brave, which came from my grandfather. It's come to really symbolize the story of many, many people who study in FEU. Many of them come from difficult backgrounds. And so it's our duty and responsibility to make sure that they have a good education. They are able to move forward in life. No? And if we're able to do that, then we should be happy that we're continuing the original mission of my uh, grandfather. It's good to dream and then to see that whatever it is that you are aiming for has meaning for other people also. <laughs>